Mr. Executive, Rod Sterling is here to see you. Great, send him in. I'll do that right now. She'll do that right now? I hate when she does that like she has any sort of power in this realm. Rod, buddy, great to see you. Please sit down. And before even saying anything, I want to offer you a job. A job. A bold idea for a location known as the Pocket. For inside, it contains a universe that holds a key to infinity. Boy, howdy. You okay there, Rod? You need a cigarette? Maybe a little amphetamine in the blood? Blood flows like time. As you age, it slows. But when you're young, it flows so freely, it can be used to power a machine. A machine called imagination. How's that not supposed to freak me out, Rod? Fear is the playground of imagination. The... Look, Rod, can you please just answer me straight? Do you want the job? <laughs> yes. Good lord, Rod. That physically hurt you, didn't it? <laughs> no, don't. Don't. You have the job. Do you have a story for the first episode? Here. Yeah. I don't like this one. Okay. Here. Yeah. I don't like this one. Yeah. Uh, here. I don't like this one. Fine. Here. Perfect! I love it! Boop! Mr. Executive, I have the life rights to the Bobby Fischer movie for you. Oh, jeez. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, bring it in. Let's sneak out the back. Here's your... Mr. Executive? Rod Sterling? But I was just called in here! Where is everybody? Oh, oh. Okay, Rod, I think you need to go over this with me one more time. I don't know why. It seems pretty simple to me. I know it does, Rod. But I, I think it's pretty important we try again. All right. I want to kill a little girl on camera. Now, uh, you see, Rod, that's the part I'm having trouble with. I don't understand why. Well, Rod, to be honest, I don't know if you really want to kill the little girl or not. Oh, I think that's pretty clear. No, Rod, it's not. Now just tell me, do you really want to kill the little girl for this episode? What? Why would I even answer such a ridiculous question like that? I've made my qualms quite clear. Are you even listening to me? No. I'm listening to a place. A place made of light. This light shines, not from above, but from below. Oh, I'm not falling for any of that busker malarkey, Rod! Boop! Mr. Executive, your four o'clock is here early. Uh, yeah, I might as well get it over with. Send them in. Send who in? Uh, sorry, Rod. After a little incident at the local high school, I have to do community service in the form of letting the local wrestling team conduct at least one match in my office. That seems inconvenient for everyone, even in the Twilight Zone. Uh, the show's not popular enough for you to talk that way, Rod. Now help me move the desk. Ready? Ready? Go! <laughs> <laughs> Point! Score! Zero for the Cobra! One for the Angels! Boop! Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here and he's claiming to be your 3PM. What? Oh, he's not my 3PM. I'm meeting with the host for that new quiz show we haven't created yet. Yes, sir. I told him that, but instead of leaving, he put on a fake mustache and took out a bucket of dirt. Oh, jeez. Not this again. Send him in and let's get it over with. Time! The past. Location. Rod! Stop pouring dirt everywhere! You're making a mess! And what did you do with the new host I'm supposed to meet with? A man whose only solace is found at the bottom of a bottle. Wait, did you get my new host drunk? A man whose journey through the shadows begins and ends with a gun. A gun? What are you talking about, Rod? Oh, did you shoot my new host? Oh, Rod, I never even learned what his name was. We were supposed to go over questions for this new quiz show. Questions like, what's your name, and how should I address you? Or, a clock created by scientists in 1947 does not tell time. When is this clock set to strike midnight? Both questions posed. Both easily answered. Mr. Denton on Doomsday. Good to see you today, Mr. Serling. What can I do for you? I'm getting old, and I think I deserve a statue of myself. Uh, Rod, 
you're four episodes into the series. Why would you think that? Because of my amazing voice. And how would a statue immortalize your voice? Well, the statue would talk. Obviously. All the time, Rod? No, not all the time. It would shout out some of my famous quotes throughout the day. Fam- famous quotes? Okay, uh, you have those? I certainly do. Oh, like what? Let, come on, let's hear one. <clears throat> when is a man not a man? When he's reduced to something less by the society around him. Yeah, we really need to immortalize that one. Kids in the future will really benefit from that. Rod, please, let, let me hear another. <clears throat> Question. How can you climb a mountain of emotion? Answer. With an ice pick of stoicism and a Sherpa of your own psyche. Look, Rod, the studio doesn't even make statues. So here's what you can do. You could take uh, this half-inch tall nativity scene I seem to have lying around my office and call it a shrine to yourself. And then write the next episode. Or you can have this. What's this? It's your contract. You could take it home and nail it to your wall like a plaque. Because we don't need it anymore. So which one do you pick? <sighs> 16-millimeter shrine. Boop! Dolores, do you have the address for my 11 a.m.? I don't want to be late. No, sir. We were never given an address. You were just told to meet at the Frodrangle Orphanage. Oh, this is bad. This is going to be a big break for the studio. Oh, we were... Mr. Executive, Rod Sterling just walked in. I already learned security. Oh, the nerve of this guy to keep showing up. Uh... I told you he's through. He's insisting he's from the future and that you need his help with the orphanage. The orphanage? How does he... Send him in. A journey lies ahead. Not now, Rod. I just need to know. The orphanage. Do you know where it is? Somewhere hidden between the light and the shadow. There lies a nondescript building. Rod! Please, if you know where it is, just tell me or lead me there. Is it close? I need those orphans. Close is but a matter of perspective. But the orphanage in question, run by one Kremlin Fodrangle, is well within walking distance. All right, Rod. I'm not even going to ask you what's under the sheet that walked in here with you. Just go ahead and say something weird. Christmas time. Christmas? Rod, are, are you high? It's October 29th. Why are you even... <sighs> no, I told you to say something weird. That's actually on me. All right, keep keep going. Christmas time is a wonderful time of year. A time when men and women come together as brother and sister. And the human race becomes family. A dysfunctional family. Filled with incest and infighting. But a family nonetheless. Ooh, you're losing me, Rod. Every year we lose that moment. It melts like snow and pools in the oils of human indecency in the gutter of every street in America. You know, it's starting to smell like a gutter in here. What's under the sheet, Rod? What if, one man asks, what if we could have that feeling all year round? Uh, How often do I have to visit my in-laws? That's on you. But only one man would make such a wish come true. Ho, ho, ho. Holy crap, is that a person under the sheet? Wait, that's not surprising. I saw it walk in. Who's under there? A homeless man I found up the street. I mean, Santa Claus! Hello. Say a line, Ralph. Oh, right, right. Ho, ho, ho. Good. Here's 35 cents. Rod, it's way too early to be talking about Christmas. Plus, no one wants to watch Christmas movies anymore. They always trick you into thinking it's a brand new story, and then it's just a Christmas carol again. Okay. So then it's not about Christmas time. So, what's it about? Arbor Day time? Arbor Day... Of all the holidays to pick from, you didn't choose Thanksgiving. The one that's coming up in a month's time? It's hard to do without my dartboard. Boop. Mr. Executive, the lawyers from the Jewish Organization of Inclusion are here. Oh, jeez. Oh, this won't be good for any of us. Uh, you, you gotta get that Santa Claus hobo out of here. They said their people have been through enough and they shouldn't have to wait any longer. They're coming in now. Uh, quick, make your... Escape, Claus. Boop. 
Dolores, where's Rod? He's supposed to be here already. He showed up while you were out for lunch. He seemed awfully sad, so I told him he could wait in your office until you got back. What? You let him... Rod, are you in here? <laughs> Consider, if you will, a writer. Rod, have you been standing there this whole time? Take that lampshade off. Where's my lamp? <sighs> Consider, if you will, a writer. Ahead of his time. Crippled by the limitations of society. Drifting all alone through the vast emptiness that is cutting-edge science fiction. Oh, we get it, Rod. You won some Emmys. But... What do you have to feel so lonely for anyway, huh? You've got a whole studio behind you. 36-episode commitment. And listen, I'm here for you. Boop. And so am I. Say, that's right. What was I thinking? Maybe I just need a cigarette to clear my mind. That's the spirit. Now where's the rod we all know and love? That go-getter rod. Submitted for your approval. A man... A man whose vast vocabulary and vaguely disguised social commentary will bring about a new age. Ah, uh, stop. Never mind. I forget how much that nonsense irks me. I don't want the go-getter rod. I prefer the other rod. The Lonely. No, Rod. You can't just film a book. Haven't you seen one of those plays based on a novel? They're all terrible. You know, you don't seem to like anything. Do you have any joy in life at all? I don't know. Uh, probably. Look, Rod, you have to change the story a little. And the names of the characters. For God's sake, at least change the title. Now, just a minute. I have written seven episodes of television. I don't need to have my writing mocked in this way. You haven't written anything! I can take my talents to where they be appreciated. Imagine a world where words are taken for their intention rather than their meaning. A world where anger comes from a dark place where the human soul rots to infinity, known as jealousy. Rod, where are you going? Come back! A land where the only criticism is that you haven't given enough of the gold-laden ideas that pour like water from your mind. Speaking of water, I'm getting pretty thirsty. I'll just grab a glass of water from the desk and... Where, where am I? Where is everyone else? Hello? Ah, oh, this is perfect. With everyone gone, no one can tell me what a terrible writer I am. I'll just write my first script and... Oh no, my pencil broke. It's not fair. It's not fair. Oh, wait. I have a pen. I'll just finish the script and... Done! Now I'll read it too. Oh no. This is awful. Without anyone to hear my amazing script... There's no one who can tell me what type of genius I am. This is terrible. I'm gonna die all alone. I can barely even remember my friends' names anymore. Was Ralph one of them? That... Ah, uh, well, I can still remember the movie executive. I can hear him now, yelling at me. Rod, 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 Rod. Rod! Rod! Get your head out of my couch! Rod! What? Oh, oh, thank heavens. I thought I was lost in space, and also time. I don't care, Rod. Please just tell me while you were there you came up with a new, original story. I sure did. I took someone else's original story and made it new. Damn it, Rod. Did you at least change the title? Uh, yes. To what? Uh, oh, then no. I have not changed the title. Uh, why not? I told you last week. I lost my dartboard. Oh my god. Mm. Fine. Look, here's the dictionary. Pick four words and we'll call it that. Okay. Mm. Time. What? Mm. Enough. Oh, come on! At? That's really in there? Mm. Mm. Last. No! So the episode is called... Time Enough. Ah, uh, it's nice to have a day off and relax at the golf course. Mr. Executive. Uh, huh? Rod? Is that you? No, it's me, Ronald Reagan. I'm here to warn you about the future. Ronald Reagan? The actor? What do you, what do you mean, warn me about the future? In the future, I become... Boop!
Huh? Mr. Executive, I'm sorry to disturb your 3 p.m. nap. I just thought I should warn you, Rod Serling just called, and he said he's coming down to the studio. Dolores, I was having the strangest dream. It seemed important. Keep Serling distracted when he gets here. I don't I don't want to be disturbed. I'll try, sir. Uh, now, where was I? Uh... Mr. Executive. Ronald Reagan, it is you. I, I loved you in that monkey movie. Yes, it was great. Did you know that chimp almost strangled me? <laughs> anyway, I'm here to warn you. In the future, I become... Boop! <laughs> huh? Mr. Executive, I'm sorry, but... Yeah! Mr. Executive, I've got a brilliant script for you. Now let me in. I don't care! There's only one thing I want right now. A, a doorway? Between the light and shadow? No! All I want is... A chance to dream! Man, buddy! It's good to see you. It's been years. It has. I came here to tell you some amazing news. All right. Well, go ahead. Oh, not yet. I'm waiting for something in the mail. The mail? Then why are you here? Shouldn't you be waiting by your mailbox? No, I, I had all my mail forwarded to your office. Yeah, what? Wait, is that why this office keeps getting beatnik porn and out-of-season Halloween catalogs addressed to Buck Freely? Yeah, I'm on their no-sell list. I don't want to know why. Then don't ask. I'm just going to wait here for the mail to come. Do you want to maybe talk about the things that have happened to us over the near decade we haven't seen each other? Nope. I'm sure it'll be here any second. Mr. Executive, there's a large envelope here for a Mr. Knight. That's it! Send it in, Dolores. It's my diploma that proves I've been elected a judge. I'm a judge now. A judge? Wait, why did you tell me now? I thought you were waiting for the envelope. For the big reveal? Uh... Here's the mail, sir. Ugh, Dolores. This is my friend, Mr. Mint Knight. No. It's not my name anymore. Now it's... Judge Mint Knight. Yes. <laughs> the worst one ever. How oh, dare <laughs> you! <laughs> Flex perplexity. Boop! Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here, and he says he's made a breakthrough. Great news! S- send him right in! Mr. Executive... Imagine, if you will, a revelation so monumental it may very well shape the future of all mankind. The breakthrough, I know. Let's hear it. How are you going to improve the show? What? I had a breakthrough today at therapy. At therapy? What? Why would you rush down here to tell me that? Well, I know how much you value my well-being as a creative mind. Plus, I feel that you and I have a special bond that's developed between us. A bond... Stronger than that of space and time, of man and... Rod, please. You're just here for the show, that's it. Now if you really need to, just tell me your breakthrough and maybe we can use it for the next episode. Okay, here it is. I realized I wasn't actually talking to the psychologist. I was just going to his office and falling asleep on the couch and dreaming the sessions. I feel like a whole new man. Falling asleep? Dreaming the session- Rod, we already did that episode! I thought you were coming in with some hot new episode idea, a breakthrough to improve the show. Frankly, I think we may just have to pull the plug, unless you've got some damn good idea in your back pocket. Well, I do have this science fiction magazine in my back pocket. We can use one of those stories. We can't just use one of those stories, Rod. A lad astronauts. You, you know what? I don't even care anymore. Do it! Get a new damn dartboard! No need. I've added a new tool to my arsenal. Right in my other back pocket, I've got this funny little book. You just give me a place, and a verb, and I'll give you the best damn episode title you've ever heard. Rod, I don't even care what you call it. I've opened up my office to you, and you bring this garbage to me? Just get out so I can scream angrily in the sky for the next two hours. That's perfect. Let me just write those words down. Got it. We'll call the episode, And When the Sky Was Opened. Boop. Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here to see you. Would you like me to send him in? No, but do it anyway. Mr. Executive, you're going to love what I've brought for you today. Oh, Rod, I don't care. Oh, you'll care about this one. This one's going to really travel. 
It's going to make a big bang and knock you right off your feet. Wow, Rod. Sounds like you wrote a really great story this week. Can't wait to hear it. I'm sorry, I wrote a really great what now? A story. You know, your job. The one reason I call you in here each week, because we're not friends in any way. Oh, no. The thing you're going to love is a gun. I brought you a gun. What? Why would you bring me a gun? Because you're a hunter? And I thought maybe bringing you a present would get you to like my stories more? I... Didn't you shoot an animal in the forest? No! For the last time, I don't care about any of the stories you write, Rod. I just need them to be finished and approved by the advertisers. That's all I care about. Boop. Mr. Executive, there's a bear here to see you. I don't think he's going to wait. Wait, did you say a bear? <laughs> ah! Quick, give me that gun! Blam! Sweet fancy Moses, you shot a bear while standing in front of that painting of the woodlands. Well, you saw it, Rod. He came at me with ten knives. I believe those are called claws. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew this was all a ploy by you. We are not adding a single clause into your contract, Rod. All you need to do is write the stories. You don't need any more stipends or luxury. The contract has exactly what you need. Boop! Mr. Executive, there's some, uh, Rod Serlings here to see you? Great! Send them in! Them, sir. I'm sending them in now. Mr. Executive, have I got a pitch for you. Rod, why are you all wearing bags with photos of your face glued onto them? Consider, if you will. Not you! The real Rod! Consider, if you wills. I said the real Rod! Consider, if you will. A whole new holiday. One that celebrates not a birth, but a life. The life of a great writer. Rod. Every year, on Serling's Eve, children will gather around wearing their Rod Serling masks, writing down their ideas for their own episodes of... Rod. The Twilight Zone. And on Serling's Day, they'll all submit their stories to me. And I'll have enough material to keep the Twilight Zone going for the next hundred years. And the best part? All their stories were written by Rod Serling. Rod! That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard! No one's gonna buy a Rod Serling mask, let alone wear it every year just to give you free story ideas. You know, I might just believe you if you looked a little more trusting. Hmm. Fine. Give me one of those stupid masks. It, it, Oh, oh, oh my god! Why is this mask moist and... Oh, what's that stench? Joe, uh, I mean, Rod, here got them from his job. They were just gonna incinerate them. Incinerate them? Where, where does he work? He works at the CDC. Hey, boss. I think I got another bout of the shakes coming. Boop! Dolores, get an ambulance down here quick. I don't know what we were just contaminated with, but I'm pretty sure the four of us are dying! Boop! Mr. Executive, Rod Serling and his group are here. Oh, God! Why can't he just be a normal person? Should I send him in? Yeah, fine. Do that. Mr. Executive, consider, if you will, a family. My family. Allow me to introduce them, one by one. Rod, buddy, do you have the script? You're right. I should have made a script for this, but I'll just wing it. Oh, boy. First, I'd like to introduce my first cousin, twice removed. What? Hang on. What does that mean? It means he's my great-great-uncle's son. Great-great-uncle? What? Does, was he in a war? No. Well, maybe. I don't know everything about him. I could ask him. He is right over there. But let's move on. Please don't. This is my fourth cousin. This gorgeous woman is my great aunt. This fella is my second cousin, twice removed. And that little guy, my second cousin, also twice removed, but from a different generation. Oh, God. Please, Rod, can you at least stick to your immediate family? Wait, what am I saying? Give me this week's script and get your family out of my office. Oh, okay. This is my father, twice divorced. Okay, no, that's not how that works. Hey, everyone's marriage is different. 
That's not what I mean. None of your family makes any sense. Everyone is some estranged, distant relative. Some of them don't have any shoes. And at least three of them are wearing the same Rod Serling mask from the last time you were here. Oh no, do I have to call the CDC again? Masks? I can't believe you'd accuse me of... Oh, wait, yes. Call the CDC. We did not watch those things. Uh, which room do you want in quarantine? The one next to the sunroom? If it's available, I'd rather have the room that's... Third from the sun. Boop! Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here? He's hiding behind a newspaper with two eye holes cut out of it and says it's urgent. Of course it is. Just send him in. Mr. Executive... Look, Rod! I'm really not looking to deal with any nonsense today, so just leave the next episode script on my desk and we'll do this some other time. But what's the title of the episode, anyway? I killed an astronaut. Great title! I love it! Really grabs the attention. Can't wait. Thanks again, Rod. See you next week. No. I mean, I really killed an astronaut. Rod, you did not kill an astronaut. Not an actual astronaut, of course, but he was in full astronaut costume on set. On set? Rod, please don't tell me you killed one of the actors. Okay, I killed an astronaut. Ugh. Rod, please, just tell me what happened. Consider if you will, a genius writer, going for a stroll through the shadows of a Hollywood backlot, stepping not just through sets, but through time. A journey that would bring the brilliant creative mind straight into the heart of the Wild West. Wild West? Rod, you said it was an astronaut. Oh! I get it. So the astronaut's rocket travels through time and lands in the Wild West? I like it! An astronaut traveling through time. Yes. That is a great idea. That I had. But not for this episode, no. I was simply visiting a neighboring set and learned the harsh truth that gravity is a fickle mistress. Now a brave astronaut lie dead. All because I shot an arrow into the air. Boop! Mr. Executive, a surprisingly disheveled Rod Serling and an unnamed man are here to see you. That's strange. I already have this week's script. Hmm. Send him in. Mr. Executive, have I got a story for you. Rod! Wow, you're giving me next week's story early already? This, this is fantastic! Of course it is. Everything is fantastic when Rod Serling is around. This next story is going to make a real impact. And uh, now I am less excited. And you can't deny it. It's because all the excitement has been sucked from this room and into my story. Like a great explosion. <laughs> Rod, that's... That's not how that works. You're acting silly. Do you need a cigarette or maybe one for your friend here? Oh, we're all going to need a cigarette after I explain my smash story. Okay, let me hear it. It's a tale as old as time. It's about keeping one's mind torn open and your eyes peeled. It's about picking up trash on the side of the wrecked road. A lesson about helping your fellow man in ruins. It's about the legend of the car on the road in America, of the Earth of America. Uh, Rod, you know what? I think I was distracted by my joy for what was you finally doing your job, but now that that joy's gone, I can see that you are surprisingly disheveled. Are you sure you're okay? Oh, I think so. I was a little tired after my road trip. Maybe it's the extra mescaline in my coffee this morning. Mescaline? Rod, that is not okay. This company has an image to uphold. Are you an addict? Is this dust and cut-covered man next to you your drug pusher? He smells like what I assume is marijuana, or maybe a tire fire. You there! Explain yourself! Ah! I was hitchhiking back home from the studio, and Mr. Serling offered to take me back to Santa Barbara, but instead he drove around the studio for 25 minutes! Then he said he knew a shortcut, and crashed into a tunnel painted onto a brick wall. I thought he said he was going to take me to a doctor. No, I said he'd give us a doctorate for this great story I have. Wait, you crashed your car into the studio. Rod, how could you be so careless? That didn't explain why this guy's in my office at all. Because he's integral to the story. What? How? I'm pretty sure I already told you. He's the trash alongside the road. He's the hitchhiker. Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here, and he's acting surprisingly normal. Oh, 
Just send them in. Mr. Executive, have I got some news for... Rod, just stop. Drop the act. I know you're here to pitch some crazy new holiday or tell me all about your family or talk about astronauts, but I don't want to hear it. All I care about right now is the next episode. The exact topic I was here to discuss. What? Really? That's right. I'm here to tell you that I'm done making the Twilight Zone. D- done make? You have to do the Twilight Zone! I can't. No. I've lost everything I own. Plus, creative control of the show. Lost it all after a thrilling night at the casino. I thought Lady Luck was by my side, but it seems the only company I had that night was the Mistress of Misfortune. Rod, how could you bet control of the Twilight Zone at the casino? I, how would they even take that as collateral? And wait, who's got control now? Oh, how could you do this to me, Rod? Oh, God. <gasps> now, 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 just calm down. Calm down. Boop. Here. Breathe into this. The show is in safe hands. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Just tell me who it is. Maybe we can work something out. And, hey, where'd this bag come from? Why does it have your... Oh, God. That's right. Not a bag. A patented Serling's Day Rod Serling mask. And allow me to introduce you to the new showrunner for the Twilight Zone. Me, the new Rod Serling. You, you, but you said you lost control. Of course, when I said that, I was speaking as the old Rod Serling, the one who lost his home and children's college fund. They wouldn't actually take the show as collateral. Believe me, I tried. But after losing everything else, I decided to turn over a new leaf, give up gambling, be a better writer, and become a whole new man, which is me, new Rod Serling. New Rod Serling is replacing the old Rod Serling. So, nothing's different. Well, for my family and your immune system, things are radically different. For the show, no, not at all. Ah, uh, boop. Dolores, tell the CDC to get down here again quick. Same as last time. Tell them I, I think I'm already feeling the first symptom. Would that be the shakes and the blood sweat, sir? No, no, that's later. It usually starts with the fever. Mr. Executive, Mr. Serling is here to see you with this week's script. Oh, jeez. I can already tell this is... This one's really gonna hurt me. Just give me a second. Oh, okay, Dolores. Send him in. Mr. Executive, I've got another great story for you. That's, uh... That's real nice, Rod. You can put it on my desk and leave. Yep. A real great story. I took one look into the author's eyes and knew... It was going to be a good one, just like I do with every script I buy for the show. Wait, hold on. Uh, Let me get this straight. You don't read any of these scripts before you buy them? Well, I write parts of them. I have to dress them up for TV. These authors don't have the same experience I do. But you read the scripts when you rewrite, right? No, I just write what I feel the show is missing and shoehorn it in, even if it doesn't make any sense. Good... Lord, man, how do you get more and more incompetent each week? It's because I've been to the future. I already know I'm going to be a great writer. So now I don't even have to exert myself anymore. Uh, Rod, time travel is a complicated thing. Nearly any insignificant interaction could wildly change the outcome of the future. The very fact that you're no longer working hard could mean you actually never do any of the things that make you a great writer in that future timeline. My God. God, you're probably right. That means I have to go back. Back? Back where? You haven't done anything yet. There's still time for you to become a famous writer in the future. No. I have to go back to stop myself from becoming a famous writer. So that way, instead of me having to work hard to become a famous writer, I'll get to lay around and become a famous writer. Thus, changing the course of history. Uh, Rod, I... Look, I'm just a middleman in all this. You don't have to come into my office each and every week. I'm pretty sure I've told you you can just mail me the scripts. Or even just leave them with Dolores. The stress of learning how your life works and how your brain operates each week is 
ruining my life. It's putting a strain on my marriage. I don't know how much more we can take. You know what put a strain on my marriage? Not killing Hitler in the war. I was going to, but the government stopped me. They wanted to save the glory for dugout Doug. Boop. Dolores, I can't take this job anymore. I want you to buy me a one-way ticket out of town. There's only two departures scheduled for tomorrow. Would you like the first one? No, I've still got some personal things to collect. Buy me a ticket for... The Last Flight. Boop. Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here to see you. He's being accompanied by a strange man in robes. He's saying it's his disciple. Disciple? Mm, nope, I'm, I'm not doing this today. Tell him to come back by himself and with the episode. Don't kick something! Thou art but a fool to think you have such power to reject his presence. Now behold! Rod the Great and Powerful, praise him! Mr. Executive, I bring to you the good word. Rod, I don't care what kind of theatrics you've come up with, unless it's the next episode, I don't want to hear it. Silence, Neve! You dare reject the word of Rod? Praise him! Whoa, easy there, Frank. Mr. Executive just hasn't seen the light. We need to give him a chance. Mr. Executive, I assure you the display you see before you is more than mere theatrics. You see, I've come to realize that being the brilliant creative mind that I am, I hold the power to create light from shadows, to create glory from oblivion, to truly harness the power of the gods. Writing, Rod, you're talking about writing. It's literally the one job you have here. No, Mr. Executive, I'm talking about more than writing. I'm talking about answering the very questions that have always plagued man. Questions like, what if you thought you were alive but were really just a ghost? Or, is death actually just a fat man with a silly name? I'm talking about my new religion. Rod, those are just episodes of the show. You can't just turn your stories into a religion. Actually, turns out you can. I just found out L. Ron Hubbard did it. Besides... I figure it'll really help Serling's day catch on. You know what, Rod? If you've got this week's script ready, I'll let you to tell me all about this new religion of yours. Frank, give him the latest sacred text. Here it is. What what happened to the script? What's what's this stuff all over it? It's so sticky. Yeah, that was me. I spilled jelly all over it while I was making a sandwich for Rod. Praise him! Oh, what am I supposed to do with this? Can't even tell what the title is. Forget what it was called. Henceforth, it shall be known as... The Purple Testament. Boop. Mr. Executive, Mr. Serling is here. I should warn you, he is empty-handed. Oh, good. I haven't felt any pain in a while. Send him in. Mr. Executive, have I got a story for you. That's great, Rod. Why don't you sit down and... Tell me why you're empty-handed. Did you forget the script in your car? <laughs> I may be empty-handed, but I'm full-minded. Also, I don't drive. Well, what do you mean you don't drive? You crashed the car into the studio last month? No. No. My therapist said I'm not supposed to engage in your shenanigans. I'm supposed to keep it strictly business. I just want the script. You know, I've been thinking about what you said a few weeks ago. Uh, how I might not become a famous writer in the future because I'm altering the timeline. Yeah, Rod, listen. I don't know why I went along with you on any of that. You already are a famous writer. You have your own show for crying out loud. No, it's fine. I don't have to worry about that anymore. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I took care of it. Oh, good lord, what the hell does that even mean? It means I found a man who has agreed to immortalize me after my death as the world's greatest writer. Okay, I have several questions. And by all means, you can ask them. I really shouldn't. But first off, let's go with, uh, why is he doing this? Because I paid him. Plus, I agreed to help promote the business, and I have a few burial plots to sell. Oh, that seems like quite a bit of work, selling land and all. It's nice to see you help a friend, I guess. 
Oh no, I'm not helping him with the land. I bought the burial plots as a deal. See, I sell the other plots for a slightly raised price, and then my plot pays for itself. He gets a cut of my sales to help set everything up. But then, after that, I can buy more burial plots from him and make pure profit from the cut of the sales. So really, I'm my own boss. Oh, Rod, no. In fact, if you'd like, I can let you in on this deal and get you started with a discount price. No! I'm not supposed to engage in any of your shenanigans. No more questions. No matter how bad I want to know how he's going to pull this off. He's going to stuff my corpse full of wood, wool, and wire and prop it in front of a typewriter and put me in a display window. All right. That's enough. I'm taking an early lunch. Dolores! Wait. It even comes with a personalized funeral song. It's what the Greeks call an... Elegy. Mr. Executive, Dr. Serling is here to see you? He said it's about his discovery. Dr. Serling? It's Rod, sir. He just insists I refer to him as a doctor. He's wearing a lab coat. Uh, just send him in. Mr. Executive, I'm here to tell you about perhaps the most monumental discovery ever made by man. The script, Rod. I just want the script. Mr. Executive, my discovery means far more than any single script. My discovery will reshape mankind's very understanding of the nature of the universe. You see, I've discovered a portal to an alternate dimension. A portal into another dimension? Just stop it, Rod. How would that even be possible? Quite by accident, actually, as many of mankind's greatest discoveries are. It actually happened last night. I had snuck into the studio, as I often do, and was perusing through the file cabinets of submitted scripts. Well, wait. And of course, making necessary changes as I saw fit, being sure that proper credit was being given along the way. Hold on. And it just so happened that nature called. And when I went into your private washroom, there I found it. Right above your sink. A portal to another realm, with another rod staring right back at me. I can't even process what you're telling me. I know. This discovery is monumental. You've been breaking into the studio. Sneaking in, not breaking in. I've got copies of the keys. And rewriting the scripts. And giving myself credit after the rewrites, of course. And you confess to all this just for you to tell me you found a mirror in my bathroom. No, no. A portal to another dimension. Uh, right. You know the only way I can hear all of this and maintain any semblance of sanity is to assume this was all an elaborate pitch for this week's script. Well, of course, it's also that. Boop. Dolores, I need you to get the locksmith down here, get the studio attorney on the line, and a representative from the Writers Guild, too. We're, we're really in for it. Just make sure that this episode's credit just goes to me. I don't want you crediting that alternate dimension rod instead. Although he was there, too. Maybe just this one time we can share the credit. You know what? Fine. We'll credit you both. We'll say this episode was written by Rod Serling. Doctor. Doctor Rod Serling and his mirror image. Boop. Mr. Executive, Mr. Serling is here with this week's script. Oh, for the love of God. Why can't he just use the postal system? D do you want me to ask him that, or...? No, no. Just send him in. Mr. Executive. Rod. Buddy. Good to see you. It's good to see you, too. And don't worry, I can read the lack of emotion on your face and tell you're trying to hold it all back for when you hear the amazing plot to my amazing story. Yep. As always, Rod, you perfectly capture the human condition. Good. So, here's the script. I'll just place it on your desk instead of handing it to you. Okay, well, I'm going to have to pick it up and read it, so... Ah! What's happening? You're right! That blindingly bright light is coming from outside. Rod, stop shining that flashlight in my eyes. It's moderately irritating. I know, it's so bright I can hardly see. It also feels like someone is shining a flashlight in my eyes. But the light is definitely coming from outside the window. I can see the flashlight in your hand, Rod! Stop it! Oh, God, I think I'm having delusions as well. Is that you, Grandma? But you died during the war. Well, I mistook you for Hitler. Rod, knock it off! Give me that flashlight! Hey, hey, where'd the script go? 
<gasps> you know what must have happened? That bright light was aliens, and they distracted us long enough to steal my script to study the Earth's greatest writers. Uh, yeah, Rod, that's what happened. Well, I guess we should get started on a new script. No, it's out of our hands now, Rod. Script was stolen, so now it's the insurance department's problem. Oh, so I should just go home? Yes! For the love of God, just go home, Rod! Uh, okay, I'll... I'll see you later. Finally! Uh, wait a minute. Now we don't have a script for this week's show. Oh no! I guess I'm gonna have to cancel television! And this is how it always happens? With this? What did they call the monster? Well, the humans call it Rod, but I've named the creation Ardu. And yes, in every single test, he gets into a position of authority and completely wastes everyone's time, slowly crumbling the entire system. Fascinating. Indeed! There's not a single incident of anyone directly questioning Ardu's veracity or skills. In some instances, the monster was able to trick the humans into worshipping him. And you say you can make more of these things? Once the leader sees our results, we'll be able to fund a group of Ardu monsters to terrorize every suburban street in every American town. Yes, soon we will be able to place the monsters are due on Maple Street. Boop. Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here to see you, and... Oh, no. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. We are not doing this again. Uh, we go through this every week. I'm finally done. You tell him he's not welcome anywhere near my office until he's got the script. Well, that's just it, sir. He's got the script. I'll send him in. Mr. Executive, have I got some great news for you. Rod, need you to stop right there. I don't want to hear about any new discoveries or anything like that. Dolores said you had the script, so why don't you just leave it here on my desk and I'll see you next week. Mr. Executive, I'm happy to oblige. I'll leave the script right here with you. I was just going to say the great news is that I produced this script so monumental, it's likely to become known as one of mankind's greatest achievements. Don't you at least want to hear what the episode is about first? Uh, against all my better judgment, go ahead, Rod. What's the episode about? Portrait of a man who's risen to become a staple of the entertainment industry. A man whose incredible talents have allowed for his meteoric rise to a powerful position in Hollywood. Rod. But of course, with great power comes great pressure. The kind of pressure that just might make a man crack. The kind of pressure that might make a man lose his grip on reality. And that's where we find this man, teetering on the line that separates the lights from the shadows. Reality from fiction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Easy there, Rod. Just take it easy. Now, I'd love to tell you this all sounds great, and I love the script, especially considering my growing concerns for my own safety, but I can't help but notice it seems like all the lines in this script is nothing but Rod Serling's a great writer on every line, every page. Isn't it amazing the truth that we can find in fiction? Look, Rod, I, I gotta tell you, this just seems like a terrible idea. Wait, wait. What if I told you I could change your mind with a single line change? I can't even see how that's possible. No, it's easy. We'll just change that last line for Mr. Executive. Instead of, look, Rod, this seems like a terrible idea, you'll say, Rod, that's a great idea. I love it. Rod, I'm really starting to get worried here. Y you know you can't rewrite my lines like I'm one of your characters. Why not? I don't see much of a difference. Oh, Rod. Buddy, there's... A world of difference! Rod, I'm a little confused about this story. All right. Tell me which part and I'll see if I can explain it to you. Uh, well, it's kind of the whole thing, Rod. I'm not sure which parts of the story are real and which parts are dreams. Uh, all of it is real. But on page seven, the guy falls asleep. And he has a dream! Yeah, he really does that. No, he never wakes up from the dream, and it's followed by an act break. Is the rest of the story happening inside the dream, or not? I don't know what's real. All of it is real. 
everything in the story really happened. Wait, what? Boop. Mr. Executive, there's a man dressed as a king looking for Rod Serling. He says he... Ah! Rod, after all these years, I found you. Your Highness, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Rod, explain who this man is right now. This is, let's say, my old boss. His Royal Highness King Walter Jameson of Azawad. I thought I fulfilled the bargain we agreed to, to go our separate ways. We did, Rod, we did. But I can't go on without your powers. Well, unfortunately for me, my therapist was fired for sleeping with one of his patients, so now I will be asking the question, what powers? Rod was my prophet for a thousand years. I helped him hone his skills, and he helped me amass my riches. Rod, you have to come back. We were so good together. This century without you hasn't been the same. Hmm. I have missed it. What do you say, Mr. Executive? Uh, what do I think? I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on the fact that you can see into the future, but you can't tell me if this story is a dream or not. Ugh. That settles it. I'm leaving. Rod, you can't leave for another job. You have a contract with the studio. They won't let you. I'm a billionaire. I'll pay double for his contract. Yeah, okay, fine. I won't let you. Rod, this guy is clearly crazy. There's no way he's the king of anything. The both of you aren't over a thousand years old, and you can't see into the future, Rod. If you could, you wouldn't need to ask me anything, because you would already know what I was going to say. What if I give you five million American dollars? But five million dollars? Uh, hail King Jameson! Long live the world's oldest king! Long live Walter Jameson! Boop! Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here to see you? Does he have the script? He does not have the script, but he says he has the ratings. Uh, uh... Just send him in. Mr. Executive, have I got great news for you? Great news, but no script. <laughs> Mr. Executive, the script hardly seems necessary anymore. You see, I've come to realize that I've become so renowned as a writer that all I need to do is make a few brilliant rewrites on someone else's short story, slap my name on it, and there you have it. Groundbreaking television. Just look at these ratings. These aren't the ratings, Rod. Well, not those antiquated Nielsen ratings people seem to put so much stock in. Of course not. Groundbreaking television needs a groundbreaking rating system. I call it a Serling score. We've got 100% of the market. Serling score? Rod, is this just a rating system tracking you? Of course not. It's actually quite sophisticated. I'll have one of the boys from marketing come and explain it. Hey, Jeff, get in here. Door kicks open! Mr. Executive, how do you do? Pleasure to finally meet you. I'm Jeff Scrumter with the marketing department. Never heard of me? I'm not surprised. You see, I don't work in your marketing department. I work directly for Mr. Serling. I'm his personal advertising executive. Why, Mr. Executive, you might even call me Mr. Executive. <laughs> I, I still don't understand why you're in here or what the Serling score is supposed to be. I need real ratings or... At the very least, a damn script. That's where you're wrong, sir. These are real ratings. And they're through the roof. So this this is actually a real rating system? Not just something to measure how much Rod likes his own work? Oh, no, no, no. That'd be ridiculous, sir. I'll explain. You see, we found a local simpleton from the neighborhood. We lured him into a cage and then locked it behind him. And played nothing but the Twilight Zone for him. Oh, God. The Serling score simply measures what he's watching and how much he enjoys it. If he's locked in the cage, how can he watch anything else? Like I said, the ratings are phenomenal. 100% market share. He loves the show. Really? He does? Well, not at first. But it turns out all you have to do is expose someone to something enough and they can no longer distinguish between liking something or just being familiar with it. Now it's his favorite show. Soon we'll be rolling out this rating system across the country. That sounds expensive. Actually, Mr. Executive, we're making money. Since we're locking him in a cage anyway, I decided to call it a zoo and charge admission. We'll just tell them he's a Neanderthal we found on an Arctic expedition. Plus, for some reason, people just can't resist throwing peanuts and pocket change at him. So we don't even have to pay for food. Soon we'll go nationwide and be an even bigger hit. 
How do I know it'll work? Because it worked here, and people are the same everywhere. Hold on. That doesn't quite sound right. Sounds like it needs the input of a genius writer. You see, we know it'll work, because it worked here, and... People are alike all over. Boop. Mr. Executive, a man claiming to be Rod Serling is here to see you? Oh, God, it's not one of those hobos in a Serling's Day mask, is it? No, sir, he's surprisingly normal. It feels weird. Should I call security? No, I've come to welcome death in all its forms. Send the man in. Okay. Mr. Executive, it's an honorable pleasure to see you once again. Uh, uh, oh, uh, it's good to see you too again. Uh, do you have this week's script? Indeed I do, Mr. Executive. I've taken the liberty of etching its collective into a handheld legible format. That format I am handing to you now, in this office. Right. Rod, are you okay? You're, uh... Uh... Everything is a little off. If there is but one thing of which I can assure you, it's that everything seems off in the Twilight Zone. What? Uh, Rod, are you trying to pitch me a show that we're already producing? Uh, oh, maybe. I'm not really sure where the last rod left off. I knew it! Well, half of me thought you were a different person, and the other half presumed I had finally snapped, and I killed my secretary and then myself, and you were St. Peter gently explaining to me that I was dead. Oh, that would have been pretty good. But that's not what happened. I know that's not what happened. Look, just tell me what happened to the real Rod Serling. I am the real Rod Serling. No, the old Rod! I think I'm older than him by a few months. Uh, where's the Rod Serling I saw first? The one I bought the show from? The one who's consistently in my office each week, ruining my life? The man you know as Rod Serling will soon be gone forever. And for now, I am Rod Serling. The show will continue as it has. No names need be changed, and no time need be lost. Gone forever? What, what's gonna happen to him? When the sun rises blood red, and the moon sets green with envy, the birds will sing a song of elation. For the task which should not be done will have been completed, and the world you once knew will now be known as the Twilight Zone. Great Gatsby's ghost! I think I finally understand. Are you telling me that the cult that Rod Serling started has mutinied against him, and now has plans to sacrifice him at dawn to turn the world into a TV show? Perhaps a rod will be sacrificed, or perhaps a rod will be doing the sacrificing. Maybe these words are a distraction from a dance we call life. All I can say is, all will be revealed at the... Execution. Boop. Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here to see you. Oh, good. We got a lot done last time. I hope to continue it. What are you talking about, Mr. Executive? Last time Serling was in here, he was really coherent, way less arrogant. Seemed like he really understood how this whole thing works. Sir, the last time Rod was in here, he was raving about how he realized if you bend your wrists at the right angle, you could put your shoes on your hands and walk upside down. He wasn't very good at it and kept falling over into plants and low-level personnel. We sent a janitor home early because of a sprained elbow. Uh, really? That's... Not how I remember it. Uh, just send him in. Mr. Executive. Oh, God, you're back to normal. Well, normal for you, anyway. That's right. And I reckon everything's gone back to normal now that old Rod is in town. Rod, why are you talking like an old West Sheriff? Because I've got an amazing story that's going to arrest your sense of wonderment and hang it in the gallows. Oh, wait. You're going to... Kill my sense of wonder? No, of course not. My sense of wonder is a great horse. I'd never kill it. Wow, Sheriff Rod. You need to get yourself a rope and lasso up the Russell Beans because you're not making any sense. Uh, well, excuse me, Mr. Big Executive. I just spent two days crawling out of the desert after being nearly sacrificed to a non-existent god by my own cult. So I'm sorry if I'm making Wild West references and talking like a lizard. I'm trying my best. You're not talking like a lizard. Oh, 
Then I guess it's you doing that. Hold on a minute, Rod! You mean to tell me you were really kidnapped by a cult, and the last time you came in here was actually a different man? Dolores said you were walking on your shoe hands and injuring, technically, staff. Yes, but I told them a story about the power of magic, and they ran off to discover its secrets. But why are you and I the only ones who remember what really happened? Well, luckily for us, the fools used voodoo. Which, as we all know, only works as well as the victim believes in it. Which I don't respect enough to believe in, and they just plain forgot to mention it to you. That doesn't explain Dolores. Boop! Dolores, do you believe in voodoo? Oh, yes, sir. My father was an African voodoo priest. Oh, that's weird. I always thought you were white. No, I am, sir. We're South African. If you want to look up any of his teachings, his name is High Priest Febig Talwish. Boop. Mr. Executive, there's a young man here to see you. He says it's about Rod Serling. About Rod? Ugh. Send him in. Hello, my name's Brother Teddy. You're Mr. Executive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rod sent you, right? With with the script? That's right, sir. Rod's guidance had led me here, and I do have the script. All right, well, where's the script? All in my head, sir. Now, I need a physical script for the next episode. Where the hell is Rod? You know, a lot of people ask that question. And the truth is, his presence can be found all around us. Okay, what sort of nonsense is this? I'm here to help you find answers to all of life's questions and mysteries. Where's the script? Where is Rod? What happens when we die? I hear you get a big cookie factory in Tennessee. Oh no, you're just one of the followers in his cult. Oh, it's not a cult, sir. And if you say that again, I'll gut you, you son of a bitch. Easy there, Teddy. Oh my god! Rod, were you in the corner this whole time under the lampshade? As a matter of fact, Mr. Executive, I was. Since Tuesday, actually. He works in mysterious ways. That's right. And I was just observing young Teddy here, and it seems he got a little carried away. Teddy, you were doing great, up until the threat of physical violence. Remember, you can't threaten to gut them. Not yet, anyway. Rod, please, I told you before, I'm not joining your religion. I just want the episode script. Oh, right, the next episode. I'll just step into this closet and take a few minutes to get it. Just ignore the typing sounds you hear. Mysterious ways. Exactly, Teddy. Now, before I go get that script that's already finished, I want to ask you, Teddy, where'd you get that afterlife bit about the cookie factory? Oh, well, you haven't told us where we go when we die yet. And I just figured it sounded like a nice place to visit. Okay. Okay. You know... Today has been going surprisingly well. Boop! Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here. He's wearing a children's birthday party hat and holding a slightly rotten jack-o'-lantern. Should I call security or the local sanatorium? No, I I gotta see this. Send him in. Mr. Executive, happy birthday! Holy crap, Rod. It is not my birthday, and if that surprisingly fresh Halloween decoration is my present, I do not want it. All right. All right. No need to yell. You're scaring me. I'm scaring you? Rod, you walked into my office wearing birthday party equipment and brandishing a decapitated likeness of my secretary, but I'm scaring you by speaking to you the same way I have the entire infuriating time I've known you? Are you even human? Do you have any normal human fears or desires? There's only one thing I want right now. I know I'll regret asking, but what is that one thing? Pudding. I'm sorry? What? Pudding. Chocolate. Butterscotch. Banana. You name it. But can't you just buy pudding with the money you make from the show? (laughs) Sure, but, you know, inevitably, the hunger rises. And I just want more. So just get a second job. I don't want a second job. I want the studio to pay me in pudding. Rod, you're acting a little ridiculous, even for you. You're throwing a temper tantrum 
like a child. How dare you? I'm an award-winning, soon-to-be 36-year-old man. Your age doesn't have anything to do with it. You're sort of doubling down there. It's times like these, I remember the old Bible verse. There's no way you'll get this right. As a child, I spoke as a child. As a child, I understood as a child. And so I will dream as a child. And I will... Nightmare as a child. Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here to see you. He has a very large duffel bag with him, sir. It's smelling up the place. I'm sending him in. Mr. Executive. Oh, dear Lord, Rod. What is that stench? <sighs> Mr. Executive, that is the smell of a genius writer, Rod Serling. Or, more specifically, a Rod Serling corpse. Oh, no. You see, Mr. Executive, even award-winning writers such as myself start to struggle coming up with such brilliant ideas from week to week. It started to take its toll on me. Rod, is there really a body in that bag? It's the perfect plan. Fake my death and finally be free of this immense pressure. The last time I felt this kind of pressure was when the entire world looked at me to kill Hitler. Rod, you need to get this body out of here. Uh, oh, it's... it's alive! Well, of course he's still alive. It wouldn't be very believable if the body wasn't fresh when they found it. I told you, it's the perfect plan. Ralph here boards the next train out of town wearing a Rod Serling mask, then makes a touching speech about the struggles of being a genius writer before throwing himself from the train. All those witnesses, no one will suspect a thing. But... It will still be his body wearing the Rod Serling mask. Right. Ralph, make sure you jump head first. And, Ralph, you have no problem jumping to your death in Rod's place. Eh, it's a living. And, Rod, you're doing all of this because of the stress of writing The Twilight Zone for me. Exactly. But you just explained your whole plan to me. I knew you'd appreciate how brilliant my plan is. Right. But that stench? That's just me. Yeah, I don't even know where to start with all this. Y you know what? Before Ralph here goes and boards any trains, why don't we all go unwind with a drink down the road at the Willow A Bar? I, I won't even ask about the script. Oh, the Willow A Bar had to close down. Health code violations after one of the patrons left a permanent smell lingering in the place. They've got another location across town, the Willow B. Ah, so that's it then. We'll go unwind with a stop at Willow B. Boop. Mr. Executive, an alarmingly paranoid Rod Serling is here. He's rushing into your office now. Mr. Executive! Ah, Rod, are you- Shh! There's only enough time for my grand entrance. Quick, close the blinds. What? Why? Who's out there? It's my fans. They won't leave me alone. I can't get a moment's peace to myself. Rod, is this you trying to tell me you don't have this week's script? Would you really expect a man to complete his work when he's under this kind of pressure? I'm sorry. Exactly what kind of pressure are your fans putting you under? I feel like I can't find a place of calmness. It's like no matter which direction I step, their forceful radiance is always focused on me. I'm just trying to raise my son in peace. Hang on. Y your son? You're not even married! Well, I guess I should say godson, or maybe even nephew. Rod, what the hell are you talking about? My neighbor is my sister, or rather a nun for my local church. I'm looking after her kitten, Trumpet. She's a big Louis Armstrong fan. I bring her with me everywhere I go. Meow! And you accepted that responsibility knowing all the pressure you were under. Well, I figured if worse came to worst, I could just give them some of my cleaning solvent. Oh, great. What new product is this? Some sort of Rod Serling brand soap? In a way. Except this soap isn't meant to be consumed by man or machine. N neither is regular soap. Wait! Are you going to poison those people? Only if they make me. Boop! Mr. Executive, a small fire has broken out on the ground level on your side of the building! Oh god, it's them! Uh, c calm down, Rod! Do, do we need to evacuate the building, Dolores? No, they have it under control. Oh uh, no! We have to get out of here. They've captured Dolores. Stop it, Rod! Let me see these unruly fans of yours, and I... Rod, this whole time, 
when you were talking about your fans? Were you talking about an open trailer filled with oscillating fans? They won't stop following me. Because you haven't unhitched the coupler! Hey, don't flex at me with your knave talk, you square bean. Just help me get this kitten to safety. Rod, I can see an extension cord coming from the trailer. Why did you plug the fans in when you got here? We don't have time for questions. This building will burn down any minute now. The fire's not the real threat, don't you see? They're just a stimulant. What's that old expression? First comes the stimulant, then... The Chaser. Boop. Mr. Executive, Rod Sterling is here to see you? Great. Send him in. It's about time I break the news to him. Mr. Executive. Rod, I'm gonna stop you right there. I think it's best if I'm straight with you. We're canceling the Twilight Zone. No, Mr. Executive. I don't think that we are. You see, I've made a discovery. So monumental, it'll reshape the very fabric of the studio. Nay, the entire entertainment industry. Rod, I'm not sure what kind of holiday or cult or human zoo you're planning this time, but the show's done. Just consider yourself lucky we're letting you finish out the rest of this season. But my discovery... Uh, yeah. Go ahead. What if I told you that there was a secret vault full of all the gold reserves of the United States? Enough gold to fund a thousand episodes of the Twilight Zone. Enough to fund the construction of a real Twilight Zone. Rod, are you talking about Fort Knox? That's incredible, Mr. Executive. You never told me you could read minds. Everyone knows about Fort Knox, Rod. It's not a secret. Secret or not, Mr. Executive, I'm putting together a team. Don't worry, we've got a spot for you. We can save the Twilight Zone. We'll get that gold. I'm not trying to save the Twilight Zone. I'm canceling it. Uh, what the hell kind of team would even help you? Well, I'm the brains. <laughs> that's, that's the breaking point. <laughs> Sterling has said a lot of crazy things <laughs> in these intro sketches, but oh boy, that's too far. Just as fucking like, obviously, I'm the uh, brains of the project. I, 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 clearly, I'd be the brains. Also, Shit. the sex machine. Like, I'm all of them. <laughs> and I get the woman at the end. Yeah, well, why wouldn't I? I'm the smartest and the sexiest. <laughs> Yo. <clears throat> Well, I'm the brains. I've researched the layout and found that the vault is deep underground. The only official entrance is a six-foot-thick door, manned by armed guards. But there's also a tiny ventilation shaft, and you've got the connections to get us close. Get out of my office right now! And of course, there's Giuseppe and his dancing monkey trumpet. He's a big Louis Armstrong fan. They hang around outside this very studio. That's our inn, Mr. Executive. Giuseppe serves as the perfect distraction, and the fall guy. And that single tiny ventilation shaft? It'll work perfect as... A passage for trumpet. Boop! Mr. Executive, Rod Serling is here as per your request. Finally! He was supposed to be here an hour ago. Send him in immediately. Mr. Executive. Sorry I'm late. I couldn't find my pet parrot trumpet. I could hear him, but I couldn't see him. He kept singing Louis Armstrong songs. Big fan. Turns out he was hiding in the record player. It was the craziest thing. Maybe we could make a show about it? No, Rod. That's already another show. The studio's decided to let the contract run out and end the Twilight Zone. What? But it was going so well. Yeah, we all know you think that. And the ratings might reflect that as well. But there are higher-ups who are just not enjoying the show. Their stories are too weird, your characters are straight from the pages of comic books, and, well, honestly, they're still pretty upset about how many black people you put on television at one time. Ugh, I can't take this anymore. I know, Rod. I know. Here, have a drink. Thank you, Mr. Executive. This is exactly what I need to help this potion go down. Potion? Oh, God, have you taken up witchcraft again? It's much more than that. This potion will make everyone I meet like me forever. Rod, I don't think magic that powerful exists. I'm sorry, Mr. Executive. I tried to play by society's rules, but I can no longer let them tether me. 
One dramatic gulp will change the world. Well, your world at least. Go for it, buddy. Yeah, here I go. Gulp? Executive, did you fire Rod yet? I tried to, sir, but he won't listen. Of course not. Now that I've laid eyes on him, I can see that that was a mistake. We should be looking into renewing the Twilight Zone for another season. And while we're at it, let's give you a second show, Rod. Uh, I mean, Mr. Serling. <laughs> and you doubted my magic, Mr. Executive. I sure did. What a dummy I am. You should take my wife. And mine. I kind of thought Dolores was going to chime in and saying you could have her too. Oh, I already did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Rod, can you hear me? Boop. Dolores, I think Rod Serling just committed suicide in my office. I need help. I'll call Dr. Toboggan right away. No, no. We don't need the press. Call the cleaner. Call... Mr. Beavis! Boop! Dolores, have you figured out where this lumpy, smelly chair came from? I don't remember ordering it. Not yet, sir. But I should let you know a battered and bloodied Rod Serling just arrived, and he's bursting into your office now. No, for God's sakes, don't let him in here! <sighs> Mr. Executive, you're in danger! Rod, what the hell happened to you? Uh, what do you mean I'm in danger? Uh, I was attacked. I fear you may be next. Wh why would anyone attack you? Or me, for that matter? Isn't it obvious, Mr. Executive? The Twilight Zone is exposing deep societal truths that the powers that be don't want exposed. Well, that sounds like a good reason to not do a second season of the Twilight Zone. No, oh, wait. This needs to motivate you to renew the series. Your life is being threatened over it. Sounds like a great reason to not renew the series. Certainly not risking my life over this show. Yeah, but... Hold on, I got attacked, and you might too, so now we need to make more episodes. Oh, that's definitely not going to happen, especially if I'm in danger. Uh, how do you know that's the reason anyway? Who, who attacked you? Oh, Mr. Executive, you shouldn't be asking who attacked me, you should be asking what attacked me. What? Exactly what attacked me. That's your cue, Ralph. Roar! I'm gonna get you! Ah, talking chair! Blam! Mr. Executive, you shot him! I didn't know you kept a gun here! Well, I just figured after deciding to cancel the Twilight Zone, it was probably the safe bet to keep it around. Is that what attacked you, Rod? Your furniture? Mr. Executive, I'll come clean with you. I wasn't attacked. This was all a clever ruse to bring Twilight Zone back for another season. Wait, so you mean I just kill- <sighs> So you mean I just severely wounded Ralph here? Oh, this is awful. Company's got a lot stricter about executives shooting anyone on the premises. They explicitly told us how to stop and to save our shooting for... The After Hours. Hello? Mr. Executive? Anyone here? What? Rod? What are you- Oh, I knew I forgot something. What's going on here, Mr. Executive? Why are there boxes everywhere? And where's your furniture? You doing some sort of aggressive redecorating? No. Rod, the writer strike's over. We're packing it all up. Oh, right. Move to a bigger studio and- Make room for all the writers that want to help me with this weekly masterpiece. For what I'm hoping will be the last time I ever have to say this, why would you think that, Rod? Listen, the studio is over. Over the moon about how many episodes we're going to produce? Rod, we're closing the studio down. It was a sham studio. It wasn't real. Your show was the only one we produced. Right. Right, the last quarter of what you said makes sense to me. We created it to pressure the Writers Guild into dropping a strike, showing them it wasn't difficult to make something that people would like without them and their overly promoted college degrees. Well, those things are hard to get. Yeah, but the average person doesn't have one, so people don't understand any of the crap these pompous writers talk about anyway. And I can understand that, but every story can't be about a guy who's down on his luck and magically wins out at the end. 
That's why we have dogs and monkeys. Ugh. I already told you. I can't write for animals. It's too hard to get into their headspace. See? Stuff like that. Headspace. People don't know what that is. We just need something simple to keep them occupied. Well, I have this story about the complexities and deeper morals of what makes a man a true man, and the ethics of their placement in society, be it private or national. No! That's way too much. Just give them the same old crap. There's an orphan, and it turns out he's related to someone powerful. Throw some Twilight Zone stuff in there. Maybe he's related to the Twilight Zone. He's like, uh, that Superman. Call him Mr. Twilight Zone. Oh my god. I think I've chosen the wrong side in the strike. Look, Mr. Executive, uh, if you want a superhero story, uh, I've got one about a super-powered baseball player. Perfect! Another great job, Rod. I'll see you next week for the... Wait a minute. Ah! You tricked me! Too late! You already booked me for another show. I hope you didn't pack up the sound effects department because it's the only way to truly display the superpowers of the mighty Casey. Boop! Mr. Executive Rod Serling is here to see you. Good Lord! Hasn't he taken the hint? We're done with the Twilight Zone. Uh, whatever. Just let him in. Mr. Executive, I've made an incredible discovery. But it's not something you're going to want to hear. Honestly, Rod, you've claimed to make so many discoveries at this point, And I never want to hear them because whatever nonsense you spout never turns out to be incredible. This time is different. We all know that everyone experiences delusions of grandeur now and then. I'm willing to admit that even I have before. Y you are? That's right. Even an incredible Hitler-killing genius writer like myself could fall victim to such delusions. Oh my god, Rod, are you actually having a breakthrough? Uh, realizing how absolutely bananas 90% of the stuff you say is? What? No. Though my first breakthrough is banana-related, this banana to be more specific. Oh lord. You see, I recently purchased an odd-looking banana from a foreign gentleman in a local food mart. He told me of its powers, and it's all true. Anything I say into this banana comes to fruition. Rod! We're done here. You're done in this business. The Twilight Zone is done. Get out of my office. Oh, sure. And then the angry executive has a change of heart and decided last moment to reinstate genius writer Rod Serling and greenlight additional episodes of The Twilight Zone. Uh, you know what? On second thought, Rod, maybe I've been too harsh. Boop. Dolores. I've decided we're going forward with the next season of the Twilight Zone. Make the necessary arrangements. Uh, are you sure, Mr. Executive? Because earlier you said... I've never been more sure. Get it done! Right away, sir! I'm so glad you changed your mind, Mr. Executive. The next season of the Twilight Zone is gonna be great. More lights, more shadows, more genius stories. Whoa, wait. What just happened? Did... Did I really just approve more Twilight Zone? That's right. And if you try to backpedal now... Well, you don't want to see what me and this banana are capable of. Uh, this is ridiculous! The angry executive smacked himself in the face, clearing his mind of any doubt of another season of The Twilight Zone. All right! Season two will be good to go! It's gonna be great! Mr. Executive, I'm so glad to hear you have so much confidence in the show. So much confidence in my writing. In me! Though, of course, I never had any doubt. After all, I am Rod. 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 Boop. Are you okay in there, sir? I'm hearing a lot of strange noises out here. I'm fine, but Rod came in here, sat down on my couch and pointed a banana at me and just started making noises. Should I call the studio shrink? Maybe it's time to finally have him committed. No, Dolores, I think he's beyond that. Contact flight control. We'll get him loaded on the next studio rocket and just ship him off planet. A man this crazy needs to begin fine to... A world of his own! The irritate the irritant. Flex perplexities. Poise puzzles. Magnify mysteries. 
impose inquiries, and coagulate quantities. But more importantly, they ask one question. Why would you make this?